In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to connect to VTX. Not only connect it, but also use the thing that's called Smart Audio and how to also configure it on the software side. So what Smart Audio will allow you to do is allow you to change the channel and your output power through the on-screen display. Now, if you don't know what that is, you'll eventually come to know what it is. But if you still don't know how to connect your video transmitter, also known as the VTX, which I'm going to call it VTX from now on, then this tutorial is just for you. I'm going to help you understand the basic concept and also show you by example where everything goes. So the first and most important thing is the power. Now, obviously, anything needs power to run. So there's two categories for the power. There's either 5 volt and there is something called battery voltage. And how do you know the difference between both of them? So if a VTX takes battery voltage, usually most of them do, unless they're like these smaller ones, but you can always double check this by taking a look at the VTX or the documentations they provide you with. Now, if we take a closer look here, we will see seven to 26 volts. Now don't let this 5V cam, five volt cam uh, trick you, ignore that, you don't need that. So seven to 26 volts means battery voltage. Sometimes it'll be seven to 31 volts. Anything above five volts is basically going to be battery voltage. And I'll show you where to get battery voltage from. Now, the next thing is going to be the five volt VTX, such as this one right here. And how do I know this little tiny one is a five volt VTX? Well, so if we take a closer look at the instruction manual, we can see that there's a five volt in and a five volt out. Ignore the out, that's going to a camera. So this one only takes five volts and it'll always tell you how much they take. Always ignore the five volt cam or the five volt out. That's just an output. And if you connect anything there that's not supposed to go there, you could fry the whole thing. So this VTX will take five volts. So let's start with the 5 volt VTX. Now, how would we connect this? Well, we would need to find the 5 volt in ground. Any ground will do. So it's usually called GND or the minus sign. So 5 volt in and ground. So it's the first two right here. And there's the LEDs trying to tell us where it is. So yeah, we're looking correctly here. So the red's going to be 5 volt and the black is going to be ground. For example, here I have a 5 volt and a ground open. And I would just put the power there for the 5 volt VTX. And I'm good in that perspective. So now these VTX is that take battery voltage or they take 7 to 26 volts some will take 7 to 25 some 7 to 21 it just depends what that means is battery voltage now when you grab some flight controllers let's start with the red wire which is the power wire for example this one's all the way on the left where it says 7 to 26 volts and it, it would be the red wire here and on this VTX, if we take a closer look, usually they have marked around the same thing. This one's 7 to 25 volts, still within the range. And it's this red one right here. So where would the red wire of the battery voltage go? Now, it can go into multiple places. Some flight controllers will have pads called 9V, which means 9 volts. Some flight controllers will have 8V, some will have 12 volt, and some won't have anything. So if it has 8, 9, 12, or whatever, you could install the red wire on that pad. However, if it doesn't have one of those, then you'd want to install it on your main power positive, where the battery is being connected. So for example, on this one, this is where we would actually connect the main battery, or what we would call the XD60, where the battery is connected. You see this red wire? That's where you want to put your VTX wire. Now in here, I have a 5 volt VTX, so it doesn't go for this VTX here. But you would want to put it right here. And there's many places it could be. Sometimes your flight controller doesn't have this. And usually nowadays what you'd find is you'd buy something like this, which is a flight controller and an ESC. Now, let's, this one has a 9 volt, but let's pretend it didn't have a 9 volt. So where would I put the red wire? Well, I would put the red wire where the battery is going to be connected because this is where the battery would come in, just like this drone right here. And as you can tell, the motors are connected to the side. And that's what would happen on this one. So I'd find the plus sign and I would put my wire there. And my plus sign is right there. So that's where I'd put the red wire from this VTX there or the red wire from these VTX there. Now that's covered. Next is the ground, which is the black wire. It'll go on any ground pad. It doesn't matter and you'll be fine. You could even connect it to here or you can even connect it to here. So that doesn't matter. Now we're left with either one wire or two wires. Some VTXs have something called smart audio. And let's leave that for last. The next wire is the most important. Usually it's just three important wires to connect which is again, the red, black, and yellow, which is the video. And you'll be like, why can't you just connect the camera direct to the video line? Well, for a couple reasons. Now we get this very valuable information on the screen that gets overlaid over the camera image. And it's something called OSD, on-screen display. And it's this little chip right here. I don't want to get too far in it because I don't want to lose you. But anyways, the camera's video signal would go through this chip and then pop out to 
the video transmitter and overlay all the information down to our goggles. So the yellow wire or the video wire, whatever color it might be, but usually it's yellow, it would either go to a VO pad, which means video output, because each flight controller has its own naming schemes, or it would go to a pad called VTX, or even cam out sometimes. So for example, on this flight controller, we have, it's called V out, they're completely calling it V out, so video output. Here, what they're calling it is VTX, so it's right there. And yeah, that's the thing to look out for. Either video out in some sort of abbreviation, like V out, VO, uh, video output, or VTX. That's what they'll usually call it. And that's where your yellow line would go. And that goes for every single VTX. No matter if it's a five volt or these big VTXs, they all work exactly the same way. Next, we have the thing called smart audio. So I'm gonna show you where it would be connected, what to look for, and how to even configure it inside the beta flight configurations tab. So every flight controller has some pads called either R1 and T1 and R2 and T2, or they would either call it RX1 or an R and TX1. So what do those mean? Well, basically you could think of them as USB ports on the flight controller. And if you see a RX4 and a TX4, basically this is one USB port. So if you use the R, then you're not gonna be able to use the two for another device. But if one device, the same device needs the R and the T, then you can use them. But for example, uh, you have your receiver, which would go on R. We'll explain that later if you don't know how that works. You can't put the smart audio on the same T. So if we had the receiver on RX4, we're not going to be able to put the smart audio on TX4. We would have to go find one that's not being used. Now, what does the R stand for and what does the T stand for? Well, the R is to receive data. So if it wants to receive something, then you would put it to the R. Now, if it wants to send something, it would go to the T, which is transmit data. So we want the flight controller to tell the VTX what to do. So we want a transmit pad. So any TX number or T number is gonna work just fine. So for example, here what we can do is we can either put it on TX4, TX3, and any other TX that's open. And here's a TX1. But for example, if we're using RX1 for something else, then you cannot use the TX1. So keep that in mind. So if one of the numbers is being used, you can't use the opposite of it. So you have to find two that are open because that simulates just a one USB connection. So just imagine a USB is connected into one of the numbers, that's it, you can't use it because something's already connected there. Hopefully that made sense. So on this flight controller where I've set it is on TX1. It's right there on TX1 here. This is my smart audio. So you can see that right there, it says smart audio. And here, I think it'll also say smart audio. And here we go, here we have more smart audio. Now, usually some of them will come with two extra wires left over like these guys. And what that is, is an extra voltage regulator for the camera, but we're not gonna be using that. So what you can do is just cut them off. But when you cut them off, be careful not to have little strands sticking out because that'll be a nightmare for you. So for example, we're not gonna be needing the five volt cam and this ground, okay? So we, cause we're already giving five volts from the flight controller. We'll cover the cameras in a later video, but we're giving five volts to the camera from here. So what you can do is once you figure out the two wires you don't need, you could actually remove them. Don't pull like this. You can grab yourself some tweezers here and find them. So for example, we don't want these two. So what can we do with these here? Well, if you take a closer look here, you'll see these little tabs right here. So for example, I don't want this second one, which is blue. This was the five volt. So I just pull slightly, bend the pin up or bend that plastic up slightly like that. And then quickly just pull the blue wire out and now it's out. And keep these, these will come in handy in a later day because usually these are all the same size and you could just stick it back in. This way you didn't break it. And then you could push it back with your finger, that little plastic piece. And we're gonna do the same thing to the other wire as well. So we're just gonna bend it and pull it. This is the best and safest way to do it because sometimes if you cut them even really short, they might short circuit and that could be a nightmare if you lose video feed in the air. So now we're just left with four wires basically for that VTX. Okay, now I've connected the USB, but before I go into Betaflight, I need to remember what I put the smart audio on. And here I've set it up on TX1. Now this is gonna play a big role right now. So remember, TX1 currently for our board here. All right, so the first thing you wanna make sure is you're on the correct COM port. Now I know COM1 is nothing on my PC, so it's COM15. We're gonna go ahead and go into connect. And now we only need to focus on one tab on the left, which is called the ports tab. 
Now, this will play a big role later on in the future videos, how to set up your receiver. And this is really critical part of everything. Now, remember how we had the TX1, the TX2, and the TX4 and all of these? This is what they relate to. So UART1 would be TX and RX1. UART2, which is, we'll call it USB2, is for RX2 and TX2. And again, it goes down for everything. Now, we've installed our smart audio into TX1. So we need to take a look at UART1. Now you want to make sure this is turned off and this is turned off this is disabled this is also disabled and we want to go to peripherals and this is where you find tbs smart audio this is what we want here now if you had the irc tramp protocol rarely you see those vtx's but that's where you'd want to go they have some other things also but we're not going to get into those this is what you want to look for you want to click on that and now if you go ahead and try everything out it won't work because you still need to save so we would save save and reboot and now everything should be working so we're going to just reconnect again and just double check it so yes vtx tbs smart audio it's off off disabled disabled and there it is under peripherals now let's connect a screen and take a look at how we would control this so before we do this step this is me from the future um you're going to hear some noise coming in the microphone from the controller because the antenna was right under the microphone once i move it then that noise will go away and i do apologize for that i didn't know that was going to happen so carry on. All right, so now everything should be configured. As you can tell, I've removed the USB. Now I'm gonna apply power so the VTX will boot up. So here I'm pretending like I plugged in the battery and everything should power up. So here we see that the VTX did power up and well, it's gonna be difficult, but we are on A1 currently. So here's A1 and we do have our antenna, which is really important. Now remember when I told you if there's no camera, there's no signal, you'll get a black image? Well, this means that the VTX is working, but the camera isn't. Well, because obviously I don't have a camera connected. If I were to come in and plug in the camera, we would have video feed. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're not gonna do that. And I'm gonna show you how to enter the menu and change the settings. So what you'd wanna do is you wanna grab your controller here and you want to bring up your throttle, make sure obviously you're disarmed, yaw to the left and then press up. And then you see here, we just got a menu. And now we'll be able to use the right joystick in order to switch with this. So I'm gonna use this right here and scroll down to features and whatever I wanna select, then I'd go to the right. And then you enter this menu here. Now you wanna go to VTX SA, which means VTX Smart Audio. We're gonna go to the right. And now we can see we can switch the channel from A1. See here's A, there's one. And then that also gives us our power, which is our output power that whatever we want to broadcast that, as you can tell right here. So right now it's on A1. I'm going to change it to A2. So we're going to go to band or no, there we go. We're just going to say two here. So now we're on A. And if, we, if you see, if you take a look here, I'm switching the band and we can see the R band, the F band, the E band, the B band and the A. So we're going to have it be A2. And then the power, I'm going to keep it 25 milliwatts. You can change this to whatever the maximum is of your VTX. And then if I click set now, confirm, we should lose video signal. Why? Because look, now that changed to A2. So we can see A and then 2. So if we switch the channel to A2, we get our video feedback, kind of. All right, and then now we get our video feedback since now we are on A2 on the goggle also. Now, sometimes if you power it off here, it won't save and it'll come back to A1. So you wanna go to back and then scroll back down, go to back again, and you can say save and exit. And that's it, now it's saved. Every time it boots, it'll always be on A2. So I really hope that was useful to someone. And again, just to show you how to access the menu, you would put your throttle to the center and then y'all to the left and then push up once and then you would enter that menu and then you just use this to scroll down up and enter would be you know like you're going into the menu to the right here so we can go down and there's features we go right there's vtx smart audio and then we can start doing our modifications now and again not all vtx's have smart audio but the ones that do you should try to utilize it because anyways you paid for the extra feature and it's really great to have in tight pickles or in tight situations especially if you have your vtx set up in a way that you can't reach also i have linked to some great vtx's down below from budget to what i think is some of the best vtx's they're all within like 20 dollars of range and uh, some great antennas as well that I've used through abandoned buildings and a lot of interference which have proven to be really really great 
for example, such as this one right here. That's going to include it for this video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you do like this content, let me know down in the comment section. I also do have a Patreon if it was useful or it did help you. Uh, connect your quad up let me know and what do you guys want to see what is also missing uh, let me know and i'll cover it for you and i'll see you in the next one guys peace out